Hey, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of The Overlay, a poker podcast. We are on the third, which I think is going to be our finale, right, Brando? Yep. Try, yep. We're Part gonna, three. It just, there was too much information. We wanted to give you guys a little bit of a break. So, three I mean, part, you guys are literally getting the full on 90% of like everything that of happened. the top like, hands. And in all honesty, yeah. where we left you off. So again, this is episode 58, part three of the Brando Team CCG um, main event WSOP Dream, the Dream Series, part three. Uh, and we left off last week with uh, our last episode. I say last week. I'm just so used to thinking that way when it's like a TV show, like last week on whatever. Cheers. Um, you closed out day two. You played next to Libere, Fedorov, Fedor, 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 something or other. Fedor Holtz. You got a little celebrity sightings in there. Libere is pretty cool. Not going to lie. That'd be kind of cool to sit next to her, even though you were in the one and she was in the nine or vice versa. But still, very cool. Um, And you bagged how much from day two going into day three? Uh, 234. 234. That is a sick, sick stack. Considering going back to 1,000, 2,000, which is still 115 bigs. Wow. So, yeah. So, since that recovery at the end of day one, I have been chilling at over 100 bigs now for the entirety of day two, heading into day three. And chilling with never really got short stack, never got nervous on day two in the sense of like, all right, I need to kind of like, you know tighten nope, up my yeah. range at all that, that never those thoughts never crossed your mind you had plenty I mean, a of chips bit, to play sure, with but like yeah but like never going under crazy bits. right yeah no i'm not going crazy but like never what did i have the feeling of shoot i'm short i need to like figure out how to get this in and double up like that obviously happened on day one for a few hours but right. you know the structure is so amazing you have all the time in the world to pick your spot i got lucky with the threes and then it was kind of look never looked back from that point on and nice. that kind of continues here in the day okay. three. Day three. We're starting day three, 235K. What, lay it on us, Brandon. Um, what happens? All right, you, so how was your table draw coming in? Because again, you got yeah, your, so your you got the five, team doing research is, for you. Obviously, like the most underrated part of big tournaments is table draw. Like, I don't care about winning flips. Like the real variance here is the table draws. And I'm not kidding you when I say this. Briefly, uh, give I, us an idea of what that means for the average. I mean, player. like we're li- like my 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 day one table was a complete. Now I look back at them and I would dream of having all all eight of them at this table. Like compared, like my day two starting table was absolutely miserable. I could not wait to get out of there. I felt like the worst player. Then I moved to that that secondary table with the Asian guy and the Jack four or the Jacks where I double up and the Pat Lyons guy and that whole stuff, the pocket sevens and that table. I felt so comfortable. I felt like, wow, I'm probably the feared player at this table. Like I felt amazing. And like just the difference of the feelings. Then I moved into the main room next to live Bray. And then I was back intimidated again. And like, wow, like, I'm really not good. I'm trash. Like, these are the good guys. You know, like, so it's really, like, just how comfortable you are is, like, night and day, depending on the table. Well, and you talked about the idea of, like, on day one where you were, like, at the back of the room, facing away. Like, you didn't have to, like, notice the circus that is the the main event, right? Like, you were kind of sheltered from that. And then that, that did happen on day two where you felt a little bit more of, like, wow, like, there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah, when you got moved into the main room. So... Day three, going to get right into it because we have a lot of action. I don't mean to cut you off, but absolutely miserable table draw. And when I say miserable, I mean GPI, which is Global Poker Index, number one Brazilian player in the world in the seven seat. GPI's number one Israeli player in the world in the two seat. I'm in the three seat. Um, The Asian guys in the one seat and the nine seat both have over a million dollars in cash as they play the main event every year. They're like... 1600 and up players hmm. um then the kid to my left thank god was short he was a bracelet winner i mean i'm looking at death row here right and i'm like i'm like i'm the worst player at this table i know it i need to own it like 
Then there was a guy that's like, oh, he only has, you know, 180,000 in cashes. But then I say he looks at his Instagram and he's playing 50, 100, no limit in L.A. Oh, I remember this. The guy was a cash game player, not a tournament player. Yes. And he still but, had a pretty legitimate tournament. Correct. So, like, you know, and the way he was talking, he was not the fish in the game. Mm-hmm. He was talking about how to entertain the fish and how to get invited into these games. And you just got to drink with them and you got to give them what they want and give them more action and don't wear a hoodie. And, and you know, he, that basically saying screams, I'm the pro in this game, but I'm trying to act like not the pro. Right. Yeah. So anyways, rolling right into it. 234K. First hand of note uh, right off the bat, like my second time posting the big um, five, three off. It goes open two callers to me in the big blind. It's just like a double and you got to put the big blind Annie out there. I need somebody to coach me. on like, how much does the big blind Annie you putting out two big blinds, like affect your like defending range when it's just a double, you know, blinds were 1000, 2000. I have 4,000 out there and now it's only 2000 more to see a flop. So I felt like, Oh, anything's good. So right. I defend with the five, three off, which mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's a fault. Don't know. Flop is queen, 10, three, checks around. All four people check, 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 check. Turns a five, bink, turn two pair. Small blind bets, which is the Israeli super good internet wizard. Nice. I raise the turn to 27K because I turn two pair. Everybody folds. He calls. Rivers and ace. So now King Jack gets there. Ace highs, make two. Ace three, ace five. Not a great card for either of us. And it goes check, check, and I'm good with five, three, two pair. Nice. So instantly up to 310K. Boom. Right there. So now I'm like, well, this is a good start to the day. So then now fast forwarding a whole entire blind level, I- I'm looking and I'm way in the back of the gold, which is the last section to break. I'm realizing our table's not breaking today. So I'm stuck with these guys the entire day, which I'm just not excited about. But it is what it is. Um, Can't change it now. Ooh, um, I do want to, and I, you're probably going to tilt that I'm going to do this, but I do want to go back and just say on day two, really quickly, I folded ace four spades and the flop came Queen Jack 10, all spades. And I was so tilted that I folded and all these guys were getting it all in. And the guy flopped a set of queens and another guy flopped King nine of spades for a straight flush. Mm-hmm. And I would have been out of the tournament on day two, but I folded King uh, ace four spades. I flopped nut flush, guy flopped straight flush, guy flopped a set. Ooh. So all you guys think that internet poker is rigged, it actually does happen in real life. It does. It, and that's a testament to that. So it's I insane. was like, guys, I dodged an absolute bullet here because i ain't ever folding the flop nut flush no anyways no back to little tidbit that no. could have been out drawn dead drawn dead so now the guy to my left was short um he did end up i ended up opening the button and though we should be at about 15 3 i ended up opening the button to you know 6500 standard 2.1 or 2.2 x and he goes into the tank for a little bit and he rips his 50k stack all in, folds big blind folds back to me. I obviously snap call. I have ace king, he has ace queen, and I hold again. Another 70 30 Brando's way. Knock another player out, and we got 375k. Wow. So um now i'm kind of feeling good i'm like well you know what screw these guys they might be better than me but if the dealer just keeps firing me ace king like good luck to them and they keep holding so, and they keep holding it's an easy game 30s are good and um so now this level this should be the level before dinner break which is level two 15 three this is the absolute best level of my tournament it goes along the line of the last level of day one where i spun up the last four hands after the double up it goes up with that jack four four level and that pocket sevens level on day two where i found those big nuts this level was the absolute level of the tournament for me i won 
a whole bunch of pots. And I mean, everyone just kept saying like, man, you're having a great level. And I'm just like, I know I had nines and it was eight, four deuce and got two streets of value with nines and they're mucking. I'm defending with queen eight of hearts in the big blind. And it's coming queen three, three dudes betting. I'm calling turns of three, which is like, even if I was worried about my kicker problems, like not anymore. And then he's paying off bets on the river and I'm just good with my boat, obviously. And I'm picking up Kings and winning pots. And next thing I know, I'm just chipping up winning small to medium sized pots, raised pots. But, you know, I'm showing down ace King and Kings and just monsters. And next thing I know, I'm texting the group chat. I got 450 K. So I pick up another, 100k in that level and like there's really no specific hand that really was huge it was just a lot, a lot of, of a lot of medium and just good a hands. lot of medium and like small one to two streets of value and just pick up fifteen thousand here pick up twenty one thousand here pick up whatever thousand here and um we did have a few knockouts and we got a few new players to our table and i'm like thank god finally and all the new players were just crushers too and it was just it was sick like Everybody was good. And um, I did pick up ace queen of clubs and um, raise the cutoff. And my cutoff was the Brazilian crushers big blind. I was a little nervous to play hands with him because he just felt like he was crushing everybody. And you can tell like he was good. And I know that like if we're getting a bunch of big blinds in pre like um, like he's just going to outplay me. And it's just the way it is like. I'm not familiar with these spots and he is, and there's nothing wrong with understanding that like you might get outplayed here. So deviate from the normal line that most pros would do because you don't know how to play three streets of poker with that line. And I was like 150 big lines deep. And that's what I was trying to like find creative ways where I'm navigating. I'm not playing like a little, you know, itch for like lack of better words but at the same time like i'm not three betting four betting five betting with hands that like other people might because i don't know how to play but i did pick up ace queen of clubs he did three bet me out of the big blind i did call you know some people might say four bet but some people like "Eh, it's ace queen whatever and it did come 10 high board one club he um, led small, trying to pick it up. I, you know, can't give up with ace high on one one small bet. So I call the turns like the deuce of clubs, checks, and like some people might argue to bet here on the turn. I picked up a backdoor flush draw, pretty good card for ace queen of clubs. But you know, this is a spot where I'm like, you know what? Like I don't want to get raised off of my equity here. Like I really don't know where I'm at. Like I just feel like betting and representing something. Like he's just gonna sniff it out, and know what I have. Because, like, I am showing top-tier cards all day. I have to be labeled kind of nitty tight and not playing scared, but definitely tiptoeing small ball Daniel right. Grandu poker. And so I check back. River's another club. River the nuts. He checks again. I just try and go for a fancy, like, 1.5 bomb like there's 50 K out there and I just bet 75 K on the river. He goes into the tank and he goes into the tank and he puts out the call and out of his chips. Then he puts it back on the stack and he looks at his cards and yada, yada, yada. Three, four minutes goes by. Somebody calls the clock. The floor comes over, gives him a countdown from 30. He gets all the way down to five seconds, just about to flick in the call. And then he ends up mocking. And I was like, gosh, you're good, man. Like he, he just, I think he knew he was beaten. I really wanted that 75K. <laughs> in, in the group chat, it says, best 75K on the river with a nut flush. Dude almost called like six times. Someone called the clock, and he folded with two seconds left. Ugh. So, you know, um, then I go to dinner break, and I'm feeling good. I go to dinner break with 530K. So now I've gotten my, I've basically doubled up my day with like no risk. Not no risk, but I'm never all in. I'm never playing huge pots on the river. Right. Just like. So. Um, at time, things are great. I go to dinner. I'm on cloud nine. I have a ribeye steak, ribeye steak from nice, the All nice. American Grill. And I'm loving life. And I come back and we are 
I want to say about 500 off the money. So there's 1500 left out of a thousand, out, out of, you know, top thousand you paid. So it's not the bubble yet per se, but like the bubble is looming in the next two levels. I do pick up Kings and it was an ace, five, three, ace, eight board with three clubs. And I continued to flop. I bet the turn and the eight came bringing three clubs. He bombed the river. I folded. So I did lose some chips with Kings. Um, hmm. They lose some chip with Kings. Now, one quick spot that I was upset about. Um, I was in the big blind with Queen Four of Clubs, and this is one of the sicker hands. The dude to my left under the gun opens, doubles it. Like I think blinds are 1K, 2K. Or no, yeah, no, I'm sorry, they're 2K, 4K. Doubles it to eight. Another tight dude calls eight, folds back to me in the big blind. I like that with the Queen Four of Clubs. And decide that the under the gun's too tight and too good. And the other guy was also tight. And I'm not trying to get involved here with the queen four clubs. Again, maybe I'm supposed to. Maybe people that are comfortable playing out, out of the blinds do that. But I had 8,000 in there. I only need to put in four more thousand to play. And I fold. Flop, 10, 9, deuce, club, club, club. Flop a queen, I flush. Obviously, I folded. Flop a queen, I flush. On the flop. They end up getting in stacks. They have aces with the ace of clubs, kings with the king of clubs. And wow. I am tilting my brains off because there's no way the aces with the ace of clubs would have got off his hand. Kings with the king of clubs was kind of short. He wouldn't have got off his hand, and I would have been up to like a million if I just put in the extra 4,000 with queen four of clubs. Jeez. Yep. So that is where I am. I know nobody can see, but I'm just shaking my head. Like, yeah, that's what I kind of, it, it deserves a moment of silence. And like, I don't know. That one kind of hurt. And it really did hurt, even though it shouldn't have hurt. It hurt. And from, and it's not directly because of that, but the next, I did not win a hand the entire fourth level of the day. As the bubble's coming, I went from 500,000 to 440,000 to 400,000 to 370,000. And now 370,000 is still fine because we were playing 3K, 6K on the last level, which is still like 70 bigs. But it's approaching a part of the tournament where it's obviously super crucial to have a big stack being on the bubble, A. And B, it's also approaching a part of the tournament where I am now, I don't have 110 big blinds just chilling anymore. Yeah. You know, I have half of that. So the bubble comes quick and it comes hard and it comes fast. And we go from 1500 to 1400 to 1300 to 1200. And I mean, they're just dropping like flies. And I'm like, holy smokes. And now you do know at this point that the tournament staff has let you know that you're playing through the end of. Uh, they didn't tell us that yet. Okay. They haven't told you that yet. No. They but you know, the bubble's getting yet. close. Right. So now everybody at our table, like, hey, they're going to hit the bubble tonight. I don't know. It's going to be close. It's going really fast, but you know how it slows down, blah, blah, blah. And you know, we're, we're all talking about the bubble. And then the bubble's all of a sudden here. And the bubble's here. And my two playables to the left were Stone Rock solid players. And then the two players to my right were very active, aggressive. And they had chips. And this led to the most miserable bubble for me that I could ever have in the sense that if it folded to their hijack or cutoff, which is my button, they're opening. They're raising 100% of hands. I no longer have the chips to, you know, combat them. Splash around, yeah. Splash around, three bet. You know, they've all been here before. I haven't. Um, and how many chips do you have at this point? I have about 320K. Okay. And then... I get to 300K. I'm sitting at 300K. And now, you know, I'm not freaking out, but I only got 50 bigs. And, and I'm, of course, like, at this point, I could never play another hand and make the money. And I kind of had to tell myself that, like, 
you know, this isn't what you came here for. Like 15 K doesn't mean shit. Like, you know, you, you only have 70% of your action. Like you're not playing for the bubble. Cause like, you know, some people get in their head. They're like, well, I'm going to make the money. I, I played for three days. Like, I don't want to waste it. Like, and you know, those thoughts crossed my head and I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm not doing that. Like if it, I don't care that a thousand people are going to be like, wow, how do you bust the bubble in the main event? Everybody that's following me, my whole group chat, how can you, you know what I mean? Like, all this stuff is like all of a sudden just hitting me and it's hitting me fast and hard. And I'm like, I know this, this is some like adversity that I haven't faced in this tournament. And I have no chances to steal the blinds because they're all getting stolen from me. And I have no chance to play pots because there's no more flops happening. And now I almost feel like in addition to that, when it does fold to me in the rare case that it folds to me in my butt, my button, the blinds now know that I have to take the spot and then they can raise me. Hmm. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Because now like they know like, Oh man, he hasn't had a button raise in, in two hours in an hour. Like he needs the spot. Oh, I'm going to click a three bet and see what he does. So I do go down to 300 K. I do pick up Queens and I, I open Queens. So this is like kind of open in like earlier middle position and the Brazilian kid three bets me. Like he has been all day and I'm out of position against them. And it comes back to me. And finally, I just looked down. I got 300,000 and uh, blinds are 3K, 6K. So I opened to maybe like 14, 13. He three bet to like, you know, 30. So finally, I looked down. I'm like, I'm not going to take it anymore. So I just four bet it to, I four bet it to 90K and he folded. I was like, all right, like I needed that. I needed I that. Got it there. I needed a I needed a pot to get shoved my way. And it finally did. And so I'm sitting at 330K. And now I want to say we fast forward to uh 1,030 people left, 30 off the money. The floor gets on the announcement and says, guys, we are playing to the money. Now there's all of a sudden a crowd. I'm right in the entrance of the Amazon room, right in the main hallway, like the big walkway on the second table in, mm -hmm. and it's like stanchioned off. And it's um, and now all of a sudden there's crowds and everyone's looking at the clock and there's camera guys everywhere. And I'm like, holy shit, this is really happening here. So then um this brings us to the hand of the tournament for me. Um, Ooh, you're claiming this was the hand of the tournament. This is the 100. This is probably like a top five hand of my entire life, actually. So like nice. it, it's yeah. So I'm sitting, I'm still chilling around 300 K, which is still 50 bigs. I'm on the bubble. Um, the dude who is, I'm in the three seat. The guy in the one seat is taking over the bubble. He's just gone from 500 K where I wanted to be to start the bubble to like 850 K. Yeah, for just sure. Going, picking up lines, literally just picking on all of us, opening every hand. And then he's actually like picking up hands too. Like this kid is owning the bubble. Very talkative, very nice kid. Um, anyways, 3,030 left. He finally folds. And then the Israeli pro who has 270K to start the hand. I have 300K to start the hand. Opens. Raises because it's on him, obviously. I look down at the King Jack of Hearts. So I think about it for a second. And I'm like, this would be a spot. And, and like, this is me being kind of a fish. But I'm not a fish. But like, here's my thought process is... This is a three bettable hand, right? King Jack of Hearts on the button, kind of a slam dunk spot for a three bet. In as played in the exact spot I'm in, 30 off the money in the main event where me and this kid are are desperate for for spots. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna call here. King Jack is like, I'm not gonna call a shove if he four bets, but it's too good to fold. It's like kind of the perfect hand to see a flop with. I don't want to lose my equity and get raised because I have to fold, but I don't want to fold. So I call blinds fold. So we go heads up in position. Flop is 10, six, three, one heart. Nice. Brando bricks. I have King Jack of hearts. He bets 21,000. And again, I'm like, I ain't folding King high to one street here. He could have anything. Call. What do you think the turn is? 10, 6, 3, 1 heart. What would be the Brando nut nut turn? I have no idea. Okay. Queen of hearts. Nice. 
So now I have a royal flush draw, <laughs> and my hand just got significantly better. Um, he goes ahead and full freaking pots it for seventy thousand. So now I already have fifteen thousand in pre, twenty thousand in on the flop. So thirty five thousand, and his effective stack was two seventy. So. I don't know what to do. I mean, like, you can jam, but now if you jam, like, you're just jamming with a king high and a draw. Like, that seemed bad, but, like, calling almost seems bad because, like, now I have to hit my hand to win. And, like, I, I mean, I have, like, all the equity in the world, but, like, again, I'm in PLO mode. And it's like, well, if it's just king high, like, I only have one shot to hit it. Like, and I go through all the options and I'm like folding. I could just now if I fold, I'm like, I'm limping into the money and you know, like I'm just gonna play tight the rest of the night and try and min cash this thing. So I'm like, screw it. I can I can call here, I can miss, and I can still squeeze into the bubble. So I call the 70,000, leaving him with a hundred and forty thousand behind, and the pot being a hundred and seventy-five thousand. So he has less than a pot size bet on the river. And if he has 140,000, that means I have 170,000 because I started with, I have a pot size. I have what's in the pot. He has 30,000 less than that. River is the deuce of freaking diamonds and I miss. And I'm like, God damn it. Well, I got 170K left. Like I'm going to limp into the money and main cash. Maybe, hopefully, 30 off the money. I'm just never going to play a hand again. And GG, my main event's over. And then he thinks about it and thinks about it and thinks about it for I don't know, two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he checks. He checks the river. And I'm like, literally, as soon as that happened, my heart, I'm not kidding you, skipped a beat and dropped like I was dropping off a roller coaster. I'm like, fuck. Like, now I can win this hand. I'm like, this is so sick. I have to shove. Like, I hate it because I have King High and we're on the bubble. And this is how you bluff all your chips. And like, this is the worst thing ever. And I'm like literally freaking out in my seat. And I'm like, but how, how can you not shove? Like he sized it up so perfectly to shove the river. And like, I'm like, he just can't have anything. Like, why doesn't he just shove? And all these thoughts are going through my head. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, how am I going to tell everybody I punted this whole stack off with King High? And finally, I just sack it up. And I'm like, I'm all in. And I just shove with the King High. And he thinks about it for like five seconds. He's like, I miss, man. I fold. Shows Ace Jack. Hi. <laughs> and mucks <laughs> and then i show and then like the kid the one seat that just owned the ball he's just like wow man he's like you're just so sick and i'm just like i know he's like i don't he's like this is my 10th man event i don't know if i can just put it all in there with king high uh 30 30 off the money and he's like this is your first main event i'm like yeah he's like you're just a sick puppy and i'm just like on cloud nine i like check my heart rate on my apple watch it's like 140 beats per minute for sure and, like, for sure you know what i mean like and it was just like such a amazing feeling that he folded and he instantly folded and he you know, and then he showed me that you know i had a beat but he could never call it's his whole tournament life and i i put him to the test and you know he couldn't pull the trigger and he was kicking himself he's like all he had to do was shove first and then i snap fold and say i missed you know and he was just like god i missed my spot and i'm like yeah and he's like he's like but still like it was just like the table was just like wow man like you didn't you just lost every pot for four hours and then stick it in with king high in the bubble yeah, it's so, so now i got 470k and now i'm back i'm back to a half a million i'm back to never in question about cashing and then it kind of goes kind of quick um we did end up playing it got down to like a thousand and nine players they did hand for hand, which is crazy. Everyone's got their phones out. Now the crowd's all in there. And I'm like, I'm just never playing a hand. You know, like, I'm just folding. We're playing right. hand for hand. We lose four people on the first hand to go to 1,005, two people on the second hand to go to 1,003, two people on the third hand to go to 1,001. And then we play seven more hands of hand for hand the entire room. I don't know if you guys know, but hand for hand with that many tables, it takes 15 minutes per hand. Easily. Yeah, it's got to be gross, yeah. So it was over two hours on the stone bubble. Just we played a total of seven. And you know you're not going hours. home until, yep. until this so is done. You're not going home. They stopped the clock. They're just taking off two minutes every hand of of. But we did go into the four four thousand eight thousand level, which is the day four's level. Mm -hmm. And eventually, money money pops. Everyone's happy. We're going home. I bag four hundred and forty five k. 
four, I'm sorry, 405K going into day four. In the money, 15K locked up, heaps still, 4,000, 8,000. I got 50 bigs and a dream, new table draw finally. Um, and that's it. That's kind of the money bubble and the money bubble bursts. And that King Jack hand, I'll never forget. And, you know, just to be able to pull the trigger there with, you know, that money on the line and that spot. It's pretty gross. It is pretty gross. Like, I mean, like, I don't know how many people do it, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. So going to go kind of quickly here because we're already a half hour in. Mm-hmm. So sleep like a baby. Come back for day four. What did you bag day three? You left day three with how many chips? Because they basically did the bubble and then two. that was like done. Oh, that was it. It was over. Yeah, you were almost at like a half a million, right? It's 405. I mean, that's almost a half a million. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, but 50 bigs, going back to 4,000, 8,000, exactly 50 bigs. Table draw, incredible. I did have the one seat that I played with all day, um, the one that was like talking to me and said it was a sick play and he's been 10 main events. He, he was to my direct right, um, which actually comes into play here in this next hand. Everybody else, kind of dreamy. There was one French guy that's like a Poker Stars pro, you know, 5 million in live earnings, um, tons in online. He's the crusher. Um, I'm in the five seed. He's in the seven seed. So obviously I'm stealing his big blind, but I had like three people that satellited in like a lady that had, <laughs> was like been grinding uh, Vegas daily since like 1996. <laughs> nice. Like great. Actually, I'm not going to lie. Best table draw of the entire tournament for me. Finally, I got an easy table. I'm like, day four? I can't believe this. Going in, like, literally high as a kite. Not on drugs, but just, like, on the feeling of... Right, you're on cloud this, nine. This day is like, you know, this is... You know, they always say day four is moving day. Like, day four, you either, you know, you're main cash or you're making a run. It's like, there's no in between. And truth um, be told, once you go to the min cash, which is 15000 and then you go 400 spots up, and you're at $21,060. So, like... It, the bubble is not only burst, it's like over until much, right, the much, final much, much, much later. 250, like right. until you start getting to 40K, which is final, like I want to say 250. Mm-hmm. Like the the thousand, thousand place to 250 place really doesn't matter that much. It, I mean, I sure, mean, it matters. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of, of money. Course. But like in the scheme of the whole entire tournament, Correct. it's basically almost the same. You shouldn't which be is playing. Why people. Right. The idea yeah, you is be playing your play is not going to be affected by the pay jumps because they're so insignificant at that point. Like, it doesn't matter. You should just be basically the money bubble hasn't actually burst yet. You're just getting paid a little bit to play. All right. So day yep. four starts. So day four starts. 400K in ships. Brando's Literally, got a great, great seating, great spot, good table. Literally, good table. no joke. The first orbit, we lose 200 people. Because they're all just hanging on. They were all like guys with like yeah. 50K, 40K. You just lost 20% 60. of the field. Just brrr, yeah. literally like, I mean like, yeah. So like you go from 1,000 to 800 pretty fast. Yes. And then a pay jump happens. It gets us a 17.5. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Then I look at the next pay jump is 6,666. I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird number. But anyways, um, first orbit, pick up aces under the gun. I'm like, Whew, here we go. Aces under the gun, baby. Great start to day four. I got an easy table. Here we go. Raise it up. 4,000, 8,000. I think I make it 18, 19, 20K, somewhere in that area. Folds all the way to the big blind where my boy who I played with the previous day is in the big blind. He's my right. So folds all the way to him. He um, he defends. We get the king 5-4 rainbow flop. And I'm like, wow, that's a good flop. Mm-hmm. King 5-4 rainbow. He checks. I decide to A, pot control, B, play it like a little little more small ball-y, C, B, deceptive, check back. Nothing can really go wrong here. I don't, I don't want to play a massive pot here out of the blinds. And this isn't the – I mean, obviously, it's great, but, like, this isn't the spot where I'm, like, trying to double up. Right. Um, Like, you know, he doesn't – anyways, he's never going to have a strong enough hand for me to double up unless he has me beat. So, anyways, turn is a nine. So no straights get there, anything, nothing like that. So King five four nine does bring a uh, one of the flush draws hearts. He bets the turn like twenty eight k. I call rivers a queen, not a heart. Jack ten back doors straight, but I mean whatever. That's one hand. He bets sixty seven thousand on the river. Going to the tank for a little bit. And how big was up. the pot at that point? Like, what what was that in relation to the pot? Um, I mean, it's not let's that see. I made it. But... I made it eight. Yeah, I made it eighteen, and he called. So there's thirty six in there, okay. and then we put twenty seven in each on the turn. 
Okay. So what? That's another 54, 54 and 36, 90 K in the pot. Okay. Two thirds pot, something like that. Yep. He bet 67, which Little alarm more. bells are sounding, but you know, aces are too strong. Aces are really strong. I checked back the flop. He can't put me on an ace. He's like value betting all of his Kings. Like I call and he has five, four clubs. Ugh. Flop, two, flop two pair. So I just lose 150 K of my 400 K. Truth be told, you probably lost the minimum there. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, you bet the flop, you get stacked. Yep. That's what he said. You bet the flop, he either raises or, or smooth calls, and then it's check raise or all in on the turn. He's like, you get stacked if you bet the flop. He's like, you kind of lost the minimum. And I was like, well, that's why I played the hand the way, to lose the minimum. Obviously, I'm going to win the minimum too, but whatever. That so mean, now I'm down to 250K, and now for the first time, instantly, first orbit of in, day four, in all cycle, three days, it feels like, two days. And now I'm down to 32 bigs. Right. And 32 bigs is obviously still fine, mm-hmm. but when you've been, when you've been playing 40 it's a different hours mentality. Straight, it's a different mentality. Yep, completely different. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you everything's just different, you know. And fast forward, um, another two orbits. Guy to my left was a recreational player, qualified for like 80 bucks on GG poker. Nice. Um, it folds to me in the small blind. A lot of blind versus blind play. So honestly, like honestly, I swear to God, if I have to say there's one thing you should read up on and get good at in to play big tournaments, 3,500, 5Ks, 10Ks, blind versus blind play. I kind of felt like I had no idea where I was at, and I was in those spots a shit ton of times. So, anyways, um, you know, we we talk about limping your whole range and then you know trapping some of that's, that that's that's entry level stuff when you're playing a 10k. You really got to know a lot more than that and ranges. And anyways, uh, limps to me, uh, folds to me. I'm in the small blind. I limp the 10 four spades just like I would limp ace queen, just like I would limp a whole big portion of my range. And he checks, and it's king eight deuce. Nah, sorry, king eight five. King eight five one spade. Um, I decide to just try and take the pot down, and I bet small, like ten k on the flop, like eight k big blind. So there's sixteen k in there. I bet ten. Actually, there's twenty four k in there because of his big blind Annie. I bet ten k. He calls coming along for the ride. I'm like, All right. Well, it was actually two diamonds in a spade. I had ten four spades. So there was a diamond draw out there. Um, turn is a deuce, literally deuce of hearts, like brick city. I bet 18K again. I'm obviously repping a king, maybe an eight. I'm just like repping a pair, hoping that he's going to float the flop once with whatever he's got and then fold on the turn when I show him and I have some. Obviously, I'm pure bluffing. I have 10 high. Bet 18,000 on the turn. He calls again. Now I'm like, well, fuck, this sucks. Oops, sorry. Just dropped an F bomb. Uh, Oh, well. Um, Turn is a queen. Diamonds missed. Everything kind of missed. All the straight draws missed. A whole lot of stuff missed. And I'm like, well, I mean, my story's showing that I have a king. So I'm going to continue saying I have a king. And I bet 31000 And he kind of instantly reaches for his chips. And I'm like, well, this ain't good. And he kind of, he's like, what do you got? He literally says, what do you got, kid? And he calls. And I flip over 10 four spades for 10 high. And immediately, the kid to my right, who just got me with the 5-4, and I've been playing with all day, is like, ooh, I like that. So like, I like that. And then the guy flips over king four for... uh Pair of kings, flop the king. Kind of unlucky. The like the one time I'm bluffing three streets, bat, bat, bat. Right. He just wakes up with top pair, blind versus blind. So that is the second hand I play. And now we are chilling at a uh, shove stack, 170K. Go to first break. I'm getting a pep talk from the kid on the right. He's like, You're fine, bro. Like, you're good. Like, just find a double. Like, this is the best structure. I'm like, Dude, you're hyping me up right now. Like, like you want me to win. He's like, Hey, man, I want you to win every time you're not in my pot. I'm like, thanks, dude. Like, he was actually super, super, awesome. super nice kid. Um, even though he kind of crippled me. So we come back from break. Blinds are 5,000, 10,000. I post a couple, you know, it's 20K when you put in your big blind because you got to put your big blind Annie in. I post once. The second time I'm in the big blind, it folds to my buddy to my right. He raises. I look down at king, queen. I shove. He folds. So I, you know, I pick up a couple blinds there. But I'm still like 190K. We've hit the pay jump of 666. So I'm up to 20,000. The mess, next pay jump's like 1600 bucks. Like nobody cares about that. Like I don't care. Like I'm just trying to find a good spot. And um, I have 145K 
and you know i'm just looking for a spot and folding and folding i did fold queen jack of hearts on the button with like 200k Mm -hmm. didn't know what to do it felt like 20 bigs was too much to shove didn't want to raise and then have the french guy who's done this a million times just put me to the test and go all in now i have to fold it's kind of one of those i didn't really want to give up my equity i just ended up bucking it's kind of like the king jack was when i bluffed the previous day right queen jack i just didn't know what to do it's like such a strong hand until somebody raises you and he has the power to raise me with anything and so i just folded and it kind of felt like i marked that one down like i'm gonna ask somebody about that um i asked the kid to my right about it he's like ah, i would just open there and just fold doing all in but whatever so i might have played might have missed that spot but again we're talking about one two big blinds nothing that's gonna change the outcome for sure tournament. for sure you know but little little spots that obviously add up over an entire fo- like good to know i'll mark it down but like you know whatever i might have missed out on the big blind or i might have saved two big blinds whatever happens who cares so um i'm on the button the next orbit uh, blinds of 5k 10k and i pick up the ace 10 offsuit 14 bigs blinds are 5k 10k got 14 bigs on the button with ace 10 pretty good spot i mean ace queen you're like fist pumping all in you know ace eight you're like yeah this kind of sucks ace 10 ace jack you're like hey it's, it's right in the middle ace. It's a yeah, it's I'm a not, it's a medium fist bump but it's like i'm still yeah. nervous i really I don't mean, I'm sho- i don't want a I'm quick call with, correct i'm shoving with every single ace so Ace 10 seems like one of the better ones, right? Yep. <laughs> of of the 13 or of the 12 combination of right. Ace X's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the 10th best one. It's pretty or good. Or the ninth, whatever. So I shove, uh, small blind instantly folds. Big blind looks down his first card and he goes, eh? And I kind of go, eh? And then he looks at his second card and kind of snap calls. Yeah. And I'm like, oh boy. Fuck. And he has Ace Jack of Clubs and it just runs out five low cards and I break and I'm out. Wow, and that literally as fast as that story ended is as fast as my it's main. How ended. fast it felt too, right? I mean, it was yep. just and it really all of a was, it was over. Yep, and you, I came in, you know, again with fifty bigs, which wasn't a hundred and fifty like I was chilling at, mm-hmm. but fifty bigs is not short, and you just get crippled, and then you lose a pop bluff in three streets, and yeah, it was a small pop, but I did, I limped for four k, I bet eight k, eighteen k, and thirty one k. That turns out to sixty thousand I lost which is you know a lot of big ones um so it really three hands on day four the ace is cracked by five four the bluff blind versus blind with ten four and the all in with ace ten my first time shoving in three days with my tournament life at risk and the first time shoving um yeah first time with my tournament at risk since the pocket threes hands on day one wow I guess I called off with the pocket jacks on Jack Four Four. If I would have lost, I would have been out. But that's not really. Yeah, you weren't. I got you the nuts. I got yeah, the nuts you're not worried. That if you lose really at that average. point, you just that's it. It wasn't meant sure. to be. So I mean, really, the first time I was at risk and I got called the freaking first time. Well, I had the king queen the orbit before, but get called. He's got ace jack, five low cards, GG, six hundred fortieth, twenty k. Wow. So kind of just sour tasting of the way it happened, and just it's just over. And yeah. like you're run, I've been running for four days and running good and you know having so much play and then it just kind of like you hit a brick wall going 90 miles an hour and the car just stopped and that was it and that I kind of that was it I texted texted Allison I was like I'm out she's like you kidding me I'm like no I'm freaking out here's my seat card 640th wow and like I mean part of me was like I could have like literally cried I mean it was like man just walking out of there just like <sighs> Like Buckner walking out of Shea. Yep. Well, it was still an awesome run. And thank you for yeah. sharing the whole story with yeah. us. I'll definitely be playing it next year or like the next and, couple and years. I mean, what was so the sweet. one? Hold on. What was the one highlight that they gave you? She congratulated you at the cage um, for oh, for doing so, your, for, for cashing the main event. Uh, and it was a 20K, not a 20K winner, a 10K winner. Yeah, it's nice. Double up. I mean, everybody says, um, hey. We give you 10k to play po- or 10k to play poker for three and almost four days. What would you say? And have a chance to win eight money. I'm in there. Eight and have a chance to win there. eight million. I'd be like, yeah, no, that sounds good. I I'll so, do that every week. The line to get payout, the line to pay out was so incredibly long when I got bust when I busted because like everybody was busting because yeah. it was just view, 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 view. 
And I was just like, it's moving it. I'm, day. Getting this. I'm, get, I'm getting this money later. Like, I'm not waiting this line. It's open. You ha- I went to the lady. She's like, you have until the 23rd of November. I'm like, sweet. I'll be back here at 2 in the morning. They're open 24-7. So I get out of line, and then I go play PLO. And I end up coming back the next morning, or the, the, the two mornings later, to pick up my money. I was like, I just had such a sour taste. I, I just went, and I was like, Allison, need a little break. Up. we're leaving. So I come back. She's like, oh, congratulations. Do you want to leave anything for the dealers? I ended up leaving $50 to the dealers, which she was like, oh, my gosh, like, thank you. And then that, my head was like, Jesus Christ, nobody tips anything. They do take 3%. And, sure. you know, whatever. So I'm sure a lot of people are, are so stuck for the series, they can't tip. But nicest lady ever, her name was Dawn, and worked for WCP. And she's, like, walking me over to the cage with my, you know, W2G, the tax form, because I cash for over 5500 or whatever. And she's like, hey, it's like the main event's only six months away. Yep. And she's like, first time you can ever say that. You know, usually you got to wait one year to, to try this. Better again. luck like, next year. The new deal like, was better luck in seven months because that's yep. all you have to wait. And you know what? I kind of smiled. I was like, wow, it doesn't true. seem like that long away. It's so true. Um, well, that's going to do it for episode 58. Um, thank you, Brandon, for giving us that story. Thank you for yep. everybody who sweated yep. on uh, social yeah, media. Seriously, the that was of, awesome. I, I mean, I, I, for the first time in my life, I had to put my phone on Do Not Disturb at night and yeah. because, like, the phone was waking up, Blowing up. I, in the morning. And, like, I would just wake up to, I'm not even kidding you, 395 text messages. Yeah, it was great. Like, and I was part of that one, deal. I was yeah, like, I yeah. don't ever want this to end just because I love waking up to, like, 40 texts. Because, like, Brandon would be, like, sleeping when, you know, like, the normal 9 to 5ers were awake. And, like, I'd be up at, like, 5 a.m. My kids reading all of this shit that happened the night before. Like, I went to bed every night of the main event not, not knowing, knowing what happened. I would wake up and be like, I wonder what happened to Brando. And it would be like, all I want to see yeah, is a a picture of, of a bag. 2 a.m. Right. 2 a.m. Vegas time, which it was is 4 a.m. your time. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you're, like, waking up. Like, I was oh, waking man. up at, like, 5.30, yeah, because yeah, I have small children who wake up at, like, astronomically ridiculous times. Like, they're but, yeah. training to be fucking farmers or something. <laughs> the amount of text messages I got was pretty sweet. Like, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, I didn't want to say, like, I kind of felt like, man, I was like, I got to do good. Like, these guys are literally sweating me every break. Like, yeah. I, if I didn't go straight from break and, like, put out a tweet to a uh, tweet, a tweet, put out a tweet to the tweeter verse. People will be texting me like, bro, you can't leave his hand. Yeah, like, what's like, happening? What's going, on? what's going on? Like, what? Like, I'm just like, all right, man, I'm trying. Like I'm waiting 12 minutes to go pee, trying to like get my thoughts. Like I'm trying here. And like, it, it was just amazing. The amount of like random people that came out of the woodworks, you know, some Mo texting me like, Hey, I'm just hearing what's going on. Like, good luck, buddy. And just like people I haven't talked to in five years. Yeah. It's, it's like, awesome. Pretty cool to like, it you know, brings people together. It's nice. Yeah. It's yeah, cute. It was sweet. It's fun. And then my whole family's like, wait, he's got 400,000 in chips. I just cash out. Like, yeah, I, my I, house. I, it's my favorite line. It's my favorite line. <laughs> it doesn't work out. like that, guys. They're <laughs> fake. They're fake chips. They don't mean shit. They're literally not worth anything. And it's also nice to on, on the Facebook post just get like all this nice run. Richie, Richie saying, you know, nice run. Like I know my dad would have been proud of you. Like just stuff like that. Yeah, and then like it's awesome. You know, Dave, Dave Dad was just like you suck. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Just, right. Like, yeah. You get like the heartfelt that, like, ones and then you get like the yeah, right. jackasses. It's, 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 we love them the smile. same. We love them the yeah. same. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you as always. Uh, follow myself and Brandon on Twitter at the overlay pod. Hit us up in Chicago or at the next, uh, the next time you're in Texas. Um, black Friday guys, next black Friday. Friday. It's here. If it's not, if, yeah, if you haven't, uh, experienced a black Friday poker, You're missing out. Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Farewell.